We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. Hebrews 4, 15 When God chose to reveal himself, he did so, surprise of surprises, he did so through a human body. The tongue that called forth the dead was a human one. The hand that touched the leper had dirt under its nails. The feet upon which the woman wept was calloused and dusty. And his tears, oh, don't miss the tears. They came from a heart as broken as yours and mine ever has been. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. So people came to him. My, how they came to him. They came at night. They touched him as he walked down the street. They followed him around the sea. They invited him into their homes and placed their children at his feet. Why? Because he refused to be a statue in a cathedral or a priest in an elevated pulpit, he chose instead to be Yahusha, the Christ. So be kind to yourself, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Yahuwah in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 Our Heavenly Father is kind to us, and since He is kind to us, can we be a little kinder to ourselves? Oh, but Brother Rick, you don't know me. You don't know my faults and my thoughts. You don't know the gripes I grumble and the complaints I mumble. No, I don't. But he does. He knows everything about you. Yet he doesn't hold back his kindness toward you. Has he, knowing all your secrets, retracted one promise or reclaimed one gift? No. He is kind to you. Why don't you be kind to yourself? He forgives your faults. Why don't you do the same? He thinks tomorrow is worth living. Why don't you agree? He believes in you enough to call you his ambassador, his child of the kingdom his follower, why not take his cue and believe in yourself? It's up to you, you know. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him. Revelation 3. 20. Perhaps you've seen Hallman Hunt's painting of Yahushua. Stone archway, ivy covered bricks. Yahushua standing before a heavy wooden door. It was in a Bible I often held as a young boy. Beneath the painting, were the words, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him. Years later, I read about a surprise in the painting. Holman Hunt had intentionally left out something 
that only the most careful eye would note as missing. I had not noticed it. When I was told about it, I went back and looked. Sure enough, it wasn't there. There was no doorknob on the door. It could be opened only from the inside. Yahuwah, Yahusha, and Rahakadesh, the Holy Spirit, comes to your house, steps up to the door, and knocks. But it's up to you to let him in. It's up to you to let him in, see. Don't you know you were made in his image? Then Yahuwah said, Let us make man in our image. Genesis 1, 26 Imagine God's creativity. Imagine Yahuwah's creativity. Of all we don't know about the creation, there's one thing we do know. He did it with a smile. He must have had a blast painting the stripes on the zebra, hanging the stars in the sky, putting the gold in the sunset. What creativity! What creativity! Stretching the neck of the giraffe, putting the flutter in the mockingbird's wing, planting the giggle in the hyena. What a time he had, like a whistling carpenter in his workshop. He loved every bit of it. He poured himself into the work. So intent was his creativity that he took a day off at the end of the week just to rest. And then, as a finale to a brilliant performance, he made man. With his typical creative flair, he began with a useless mound of dirt and ended up with an invaluable species called human. A human who had the unique honor to bear the stamp in his image. Father, we thank you for the blessing today of your word. We thank you for Yahusha, your son. We thank you for Rahakadesh, your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you for being our God and Father. In the name of Yahushua, we pray. Amen.